Hello once again, this is your professor, Danny Araneta Cabulay, for the course Accounting Information Systems. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, I suggest you do and hit the notification button so you get updated with the latest videos that I'm going to post and you'll get a notification every time I have a new video. You will not miss a thing, okay? So let's carry on with video lecture number 15. So we're starting to talk about the conversion cycle. And this is the last of the series. So we'll talk about world-class companies. So when we talk about world-class companies, these are basically huge companies that are continuously pursuing improvements. So they're always focused on quality. Some of them are in the manufacturing sector, some of them are in the service sector, and some of them are in the merchandising sector. So some of the brands I mentioned earlier, no, the global brands I mentioned earlier, like uh, McDonald's, Nike, Benetton, okay, these are all global brands that are deemed world-class in terms of production. And they, their practices are um, what you call the benchmark no? of many other companies. So they have a very high customer orientation. So everything they do is for the convenience and for the satisfaction of their customers. So Toyota, for example, kapag may diferensya yung kotse mo, or meron kang ano, you, can, you know, they, they will recall if there is a large number of damaged models, okay? So they will recall, they will refund you. Okay, so that's how world-class Toyota is. And their manufacturing process in Toyota is world-class. Robots nang gumagawa ng mga kotse nila. Okay, so it's highly scientific. They have undergone fundamental changes from traditional production model to the modern one. No? Ngayon kasi in huge production plants, robots na po ang gumagawa ng mga produkto. Hindi na po uh, tao. Even yung gumagawa ng mga computers, ng mga cell phones, you would notice that... Uh, it's robots, so using artificial intelligence. Okay? Pero tayo dito rin yung ating mga traditional industries like yung mga ating mga food industry, tao pa rin. No? Bihira pa rin yung... Uh, meron konting uh, computerized intervention pero mas, let's say, 60-40. Uh, okay? 40% machine, 60% mano-mano pa. Okay? And these world-class companies adopt a lean manufacturing model, meaning uh, fewer processes, fewer employees, but the technology that they use is very high level, and there's a high level of quality control, okay? Now, what are the principles of lean manufacturing? What do we mean by lean manufacturing? Well, there's what you call pool processing. So this is, this is wherein products are pulled from the customer and so that means there's a demand. Papakinggan mo yung customer. What do they want? How much do they need? How often do they buy? Not push from the production end. Okay? Kasi kung minsan, yung mga managers nagpo-forecast sila based on their assumptions. Okay? But here, the production processing happens when the customers will tell you what is the demand. And how do you determine demand? You look at your history, historical data, ang basis. Okay? Now, perfect quality is one of the principles of lean manufacturing. Pool processing requires zero defects. Yun ang sinasabi natin na, as much as possible, 0 0.001 lang yung defect. Okay? You cannot afford to have a high percentage of defects. When you talk about raw materials, work in process, and finished goods inventory. So, Sa finished goods, pero ng quality control yan. Sa mga processes, there's a high level of supervision. And in the raw materials, sa procurement pa lang, napaka-stricto na. So they're very, very strict with their suppliers. Okay? Kapag may nakitang problema doon sa mga materials na binili, blacklisted na yung supplier na yan. Ganun sila ka-strict. Okay? Waste minimization. Sabi ko sa inyo, di ba kanina, you try to aim for zero wastage. Kasi if you have a lot of waste, it eats up into your profits and gross margins, okay? And inventory reduction, again, yan na yung JIT sa ka-EOQ. Hindi tayo nag i ng malaki. Hindi tayo nagtatambak ng maraming ingredients, no. Because that's cost when you do that, okay? Production flexibility. So you have your processes and there's a lot of diversity in your products, but you're very flexible no? in operations, Okay? Kaya makita mo yung mga machines na binibili nila can produce several products. Okay? And then another principle of lean manufacturing, 
established supplier relations. So meron na sila mga tinatawag na accredited suppliers or vendors. Yan na yung parating nagsusupply. Okay? Alam niyo ba kung ano ba nagsusupply ng mga cakes and pastries sa Starbucks? Meron silang accredited supplier. Hindi Starbucks ang gumagawa ng mga cakes and pastries dyan. Meron talaga silang supplier dito sa Pilipinas. Accredited yon. Kasi very high level of quality ang hinahanap nila. Okay? Same thing, pag pupunta ka sa Max Bake Shop. Yeah, some of the items in the Max Bake Shop are produced by their own bakery. But some of the items there, you know, they, they subcontract. Meron silang vendor or meron silang supplier. Then, um, team attitude. Each employee in a lean manufacturing setup must be vigilant of problems that threaten the continuous flow of production line. Minsan nga, pumila ako sa McDonald's. I wanted to buy a value meal. Aba, sagot sa akin, wala daw available na rice. Pwede daw ba buns instead? Nagulat ako. Naku, mukhang merong hindi na malengke ng bigas. Okay? So you see, that is the attitude. Wala, yung, yung branch na yon yung manager, you know, has this very poor attitude. Hindi niya na-anticipate. Mali ang kanyang forecast. Kaya, walang, nagkakaroon sila ng shortage ng bigas. Can you imagine, McDonald's, walang bigas. Eh, di ba yung mga value meal nila laging may rice? Okay? So, again, tapos ino-offer nila na alternative buns instead. Okay? So, naantala yung production line kasi there is a missing ingredient. Okay? At complaints ang aabuti nila. Okay? Now, when you talk about lean manufacturing, you want to achieve production flexibility by means of changes in physical organization, of production facilities. You can change some of the equipment or add more people or reduce people. Employment of automated technologies. So you can use robotics, computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, etc., etc. Use of alternative accounting models. At madalas ginagamit nila ay activity-based costing or ABC. Or maybe we can also use value stream accounting. The use of advanced information system. MRT, material, uh, MRP, okay, MRP2, ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, and EDI, okay? Now, when you do the physical reorganization of production facilities, you will look at inefficiencies in traditional plant layouts, increase handling cost, conversion time, and excess inventories. Employees tend to feel ownership over their stations, not Turf nila yun eh, okay? Contrary to the team concept, okay? Reorganization is based on flows through cells which shorten the physical distance between activities, okay? So this reduces the setup and processing time, handling cost, and inventories, okay? So remember, so you can choose the traditional and you will have a longer processing time, higher cost, and maybe more errors, Okay, lower quality on product perhaps. And you can have islands of technology and CIM. If you want to use CIM, that's when you try to achieve the lowest possible number of errors. You save a lot of cost and you're going to be very efficient. So that's kind of a continuum you're looking at, okay? Or spectrum. Now, the traditional approach to automation consists of many types of machines which require a lot of setup, time, uh, machines and operators are organized in functional departments, work in process follows a circuitous uh, route through the different operations. Medyo mabusisi. Okay? Now, in the meantime, when you talk about islands of technology, you have standalone islands which employ computer numerical controlled machines that can perform multiple operations with less human involvement. So, meron ka mga machines at each station. These are all computer generated. So, they're independent from one another. So, there's still manual intervention in a way. But when you talk about computer numerical control uh, system machines, no, this reduces the complexity of physical layout arranged in groups and in cells to produce an entire part from start to finish. Then you need less setup time kasi installed na siya. Okay? That's why if you go to a Starbucks, no, you have all those machines there. Some of those machines are computer generated. So, uh, you know, may mga station station na sila doon. Okay? So, it's not really completely manual, no? It's not traditional, but it's already something islands of technology na yung ginagamit nila. Okay? Now, when you talk about computer integrated manufacturing, 
Yan na yung example ng Toyota. You look at the video of Toyota on how they produce cars. It's a completely automated environment which employs automated storage and retrieval systems and robotics. Okay? Yung nagwe-welding, robot. Yung naglalagay ng mga parts, robot. Yung nagpipintura ng kotse, robot. Okay? So you see, that is an example of CIM. Okay? Hanapin nyo yung mga video on Toyota manufacturing. Then you'll see what I mean. Okay? So the Automated Storage and Retrieval Systems, or ASRS, this replaces traditional forklifts and human operators with computer-controlled conveyor systems. They reduce errors and improve inventory control and lower storage cost. Okay? Now, automated manufacturing, you use robotics as well as computer-aided design. Kaya ngayon yung mga construction firms, Siyempre, they employ engineers, they employ architects, designers. Alam niyo yung mga itsura ng mga building, yung kanila mga architects' rendition, yung mga drawings nila. They're all computer-aided. CAD na ang ginagamit nila. Hindi sila nagdo-drawing ng mano-mano. Kasi in the old ways, yung mga architect, di ba? Nagdo-drawing talaga sila. Ngayon, hindi na. It's the computer. Okay? That does the drawing. Uh, of course, being manipulated by the architect himself. Kasi siya naman talaga yung nagko-control sa computer. Kailangan malaman niya yung ganyang app or, or system or software, CAD. No? So, it increases the engineer's productivity or architect's productivity, improves accuracy, allows firms to be more responsive to market demands. Uh, kasi yung mga designs na gagamitin nila is based on market needs. Okay? Interfaces with CAM and MRP2 systems. And of course, the computer-aided manufacturing, which is very similar to your computer. Uh, CIM kanina, okay? Sabi ng git ko. So the world-class firm, how do you achieve this status? World-class firm needs new accounting methods and new information systems that showed what matters to its customers, identify profitable products, identify profitable customers. Kaya mapansin nyo, meron yung mga produkto na nafe-face out. Kasi it's the computer, the accounting system that determines which one should be phased out based on production and sales. Okay? Uh, kasi, titimbangin mo, kasi, okay, mahirap i-produce itong product na to, pero ang laki ng demand. Sige, let's produce. O kaya, eh, madali i-produce to, pero wala namang bumibili. Let's not produce. Pero kung halimbawa, madaling gawin, maraming demand, Let's produce all by all means. Okay? O kaya, mahirap i-produce, walang demand, lalong hindi mo dapat siya i-produce. You should face it out. Kasi double whammy yun. Mahirap nang gawin, wala pang bumibili. Bakit ka pag gumagawa? Okay? So, identify also opportunities for improving operations and products. Encourage the adoption of value-added activities and processes and identify those that do not add value. Efficiently support multiple users with both financial and non-financial information. So what's wrong with traditional accounting information? Why are we kind of, you know, smirking over it or, you know, we're trying to phase it out? Well, inaccurate cost allocations. It promotes non-lean behavior. Masyadong magastos, masyadong maraming taong involved, masyadong complex. Time lag, okay? That means the data lag due to assumption that control can be applied after the fact to correct errors. Okay, Financial orientation also. So you look at the peso value as the standard unit of measure. Now, let's talk about activity-based costing or ABC. This is an information system that provides managers with information about activities and cost objects. This assumes that activities cost cost and that products and other cost objects create a demand for activities. It is different from traditional accounting system since ABC has multiple activity drivers, whereas traditional accounting has only one thing, machine hours. Okay. So, I'll give an example. <clears throat> Let's try to produce furniture. Kasi... Mahilig ako bumili ng mga furniture kasi bagong lipat lang kami sa Paranaque. And syempre, yung mga lumang furniture ko, binenta ko na dun sa dati kong bahay. So I have a new house now. So uh, everything is brand new. So uh, bumili ako ng mga furniture. Pero yung mga, most of my furniture ay pasadya, made to order. 
So, tumingila ako sa catalog. Ito gusto ko. Ganito yung gusto kong design. Pwede bang baguhin ng konti yung leather. Gusto ko ganitong klaseng leather. Ganitong kulay. Ganitong design. Etc. No? So, sinunod naman ng aking mga suppliers. And of course, paggagawa ka ng furniture, mayroong mga steps yan. And every step within the whole process, may cost. For example, sa so purchasing, what is the cost to purchase? And then, when you talk about cutting, okay? When you cut the materials, there's cost. Then when you assemble the materials, there's cost. And then when you do the finishing touches, there's cost also. Okay? But then again, alam natin na, you know, um, sa bawat proseso may cost. Siyempre, Ano bang klaseng furniture? Kasi yung mga furniture companies, meron silang mga product line na tinatawag. So when you talk about tables, table product line. Then when you talk about living room, yung mga sofa, mga seats, mga upuan, that's another product line. Then when you talk about um, decorations like lamps, you know, standing lamps, etc. That's another product line. So kapag tayo nag-incur ng cost like electricity, you know, how much of that electricity bill goes to your chairs product line, to your tables product line, to your decorations product line? So how are you going to estimate that? Okay. So when you allocate those costs, like fixed costs, like rent or maybe electricity, you're allocating. But it will all depend on the processes that they underwent. Yung process ng paggawa ng chair, gumamit ba siya ng kuryente? Yes or no? Kung yes, how many hours? You have to estimate that. So you're going to allocate all these expenses. Like for example, um, rent. Siyempre, yung factory area mo at saka yung storage area mo, ilang square meters ang kinakain ng product line na yan. So yung rent, i-divide mo across the different product lines based on the activities that they're engaging. E nakita mo yung sa upuan, yung mga chairs, mga sofa, ang laking space ang kinain, kalahati ng factory. So, kalahati ng rent, mapupunta sa product line na yan. Siya talaga ang sasalo ng, sasambot ng malaking cost kasi napakalaki ng kinain niyang space. Okay? If you're paying rent for a particular factory, kasama na rin yung storage area. Okay? So, that's what you mean by activity-based costing. So, you allocate the expenses according to product line or according to ano, the different uh, sections of production but it's always based on parameters, certain parameters kung pwedeng space or maybe hours that you spend okay, so you have to look at the activities that they were engaged in, okay kasi merong mga uh, cost na wala dun sa ibang product line okay, hindi mo siya gagamitan okay for example, yung painting. Uh, pag nagpe-paint tayo, nagva-varnish, that requires electricity. E ang pinipaint mo naman, eh mga tables, saka mga decors. Pero yung upuan, hindi. Kasi leather yun eh. Okay? Hindi mo naman pinipaint yung leather. Okay? So, walang electricity dyan. Okay? So, gagamitin mo lang ng electricity. Yung electricity, cost, no? yung meralco bill mo, i-divide mo lang siya between the tables which are varnishing and the decors okay so yeah, that's what i mean hindi makikihati sa kuryente ang chairs what about water water consumption ano ba diyan yung mga materials na nililinis natin bago natin gamitin sa production halos lahat okay so gagamit i divide mo siya across the different product lines so that's what you mean by abc activity based cost is based on the activities that you use okay Ganyan din yung ginagamit po pag gumagawa tayo ng chocolates or gumagawa tayo ng mga uh, handicraft. Okay? So you look at the processes. So let's talk about value stream accounting. So value stream accounting, that means all the steps in a process that are essential to producing a product, the value streams, Cut across functions and departments. Captures the cost of value stream rather than the department or activity. Okay? It's simpler than ABC. No? Makes no distinction between direct and uh, indirect cost. Okay? So, pag sinabi naman natin MRT, that means Manufacturing Resources Planning. 
So, it ensures adequate raw materials for production process, maintains the lowest possible level of inventory on hand, produce production and purchasing schedules, and other information needed to control production. Then, of course, there's the second version, MRP2. It's an extension of MRP1. More than inventory management and production scheduling, it is a system for coordinating the activities of the entire firm, including the other departments. Okay? And then there's what you call ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. It's a huge commercial software package, pa package that support the information needs of the entire organization, okay? Not just the manufacturing functions. It automates all business functions along with full financial and managerial reporting capability. You can do a lot of things with ERP, okay? So many companies are using ERP. I know Meralco uses ERP, the previous ABS-CBN uses ERP. Ayala, found, Ayala Group of Companies uses ERP also. San Miguel uses ERP also. Electronic Data Interchange or EDI, external communications with customers and suppliers via internet or direct connection. So that means there is a constant you know, link between the company and the customers. So there's very, uh, you know, they can always feed you information. So you will use that information for production. So, kasama siya dun sa yung tinatawag na R&D, Research and Development. Inputs yun. Okay? The EDI. Now, here's the last question for this week. We'll talk about video lecture question number 15. Madali lang to. Cite one company that may practically use, that, that can make practical use of uh, ABC, Activity-Based Costing. Think of a company na pwedeng gumamit ng ABC. Maybe hindi pa nila ginagamit, pero gusto mong gamitin nila. Okay? Explain mo, bakit ABC ang nararapat gamitin ng company nito? Saan sila makakatipid? Bakit ito makakabuti sa kanila? I repeat, cite one company that may practically make use of activity-based costing, and I want you to explain why activity-based costing is good for this company that you cited. Okay? Any company, you can cite any company. Importante lang maipaliwanag mo sa akin, paano ito makakabuti sa kanila? Doon sa kanilang ginagawang produkto or services. Explain to me. Okay? Explain it in your own words. You're not supposed to copy the work of other people or copy it in the internet. If you use the internet and you cite something from the internet, malalaman ko yan, mas mababa grade mo. Pero, if you use your own brain, isipin mo, ano kaya ang company ang bagay gumamit ng ABC? Sulat mo. Bakit siya magandang gumamit ng ABC? Ano bang maitutulong nito sa kanya? Write it in your own words. You will get a higher grade because that's what you call originality and critical thinking. See you in uh, video lecture number 16 which I'm gonna post tomorrow. Bye!